Oh, we need a... That's what we need. That should do it. What's up? It's Thomas here, and I'm back with another live video. So no cuts, no edits, me and you, raw, straight from the streaming software. And today I'm going to show you how I like to dial in a lead, a lead tone. A lead tone? A lead tone. Sounds like some model of a, a guitar. Hey, have you heard of that new Kiesel, a lead? Uh, no. Anyway, lead tones. And it's fun because when I dial in my gain tones, I like to have the option of being able to play rhythm stuff. So on a live stream, I don't tend to change between a rhythm tone and a lead tone. I just use the same gain. And I think if you get the perfect balance between the amount of overdrive and distortion and certain frequencies in your tone, then you can, you know, absolutely just use one sound. Great for riffs. But as soon as you switch up, we've just got enough gain to go absolutely crazy if we want to. I was thinking about doing some tapping, but maybe we'll save that for later. So the default tone that I was just using there, um, it's a preset called Distorted Dream. So if you want that exact starting point, you want to get that tone, there we go. It's the Distorted Dreams preset. But what we're going to do is we're going to dive over to the computer. <laughs> And I'm going to show you from the very beginning multiple ways that we can get to a tone like that. So let's go right in and jump in to the int preset default. So that's a pretty low gain um, sound, right? There's not a lot of um, fire on that uh, sound. Now you'll notice that if I turn off heat presser and we're on the gain channel here and I just go flat out on the drive because I see a lot of people, they're reaching for more distortion but with the McGrocklin suite, that's not really the way to get there. So this is the amp and this is max gain. Not a lot of gain, right? So why? Why is that? Well, the, the way I look at it and the way I feel about that is if you have a lot of saturation in the actual amp itself, it's very difficult to have any influence over the actual tone. And you've seen maybe videos that I've done on YouTube about overdrive pedals where I've talked about people cheating, people using these killer overdrive pedals, but it's going into an amp that already has a lot of saturation. So really this overdrive pedal it ain't doing nothing. It's giving it a little tickle. It's just, it's, it's giving it like a little boost, you know? So yeah, I really get like disheartened when I see videos like that because I know it's a complete cheat. It's a lie, okay? But by having your platform amp, your main gain amp set up to take pedals, we can have a lot of influence over the final sound. So for example, if I go back to mid sort of gain here, I could turn on heat presser and get a lot of gain going into that um, gain channel. I could really smash the level a lot and turn on tight and bright and push it and see how that sounds. Adjust the gate to compensate. Not ideal. But you get the idea. It's like that's one way that we can push more signal. But personally, I really, really, really like stacking things. I've just loaded this sound completely from the beginning. And you can see by default, it's using a little bit of boost and a little bit of well, 7 dB or so of gain. Um, so that's pushing signal into this gain amp. And that's why... <laughs> It already sounds like a low gain rhythm sound. So with heat presser on, when we go to the drive pedals, we're in a really good spot now because we've got a little bit more signal, everything's heating up and it's kind of setting it up ready for one of the four drives or multiple drives on top of each other if that is your thing. So when it comes to playing solos and lead tones, there's, this, uh, there's a lot to think about it's like you don't want too much bass typically in your tone 
And that's why I think filtering out some of that lower end is a really good idea. So you would you'd want to do that in your speaker section where you have that global low and high cut. And it's, it's a complete balancing act through and through. It's a balancing act of how much distortion you have on your signal. Too much gain, too much distortion, all your pick articulation, boof, it's gone out the window. It's just like mayhem territory. And if you don't have enough, well, when you're sliding and bend, the tone just fizzles out and you're left high and dry and everybody's laughing at you and pointing. And next thing you know, they're throwing chickens and egg, no, ch eggs, not chickens. <laughs> Imagine throwing chickens at people. This is the kind of stuff that would normally get edited out on a, on a video, but we are into it now. No edits, no edits. So let's just try our very best to keep on topic and forget about the chickens. So I'm going to turn wide off and I'm going to turn off reverbs and delays because I'm going to dial all that stuff in to taste as we need it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get that nice bit of saturation, the enough gain that I need for a distortion sound. So I'm going to turn on the attacker and I think that might start to introduce a little bit of hiss, possibly. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a lot. So this is where I want to adjust the gate. Oh yeah, that's a lot of gain. That's a lot of gain. So remember, when you have any drive pedal in the real world or in software, you can push more drive, less volume, or the other way around. Sometimes you can go absolutely mental and push both, but usually it's a balancing game, you know, because it has two different characteristics depending on what you're pushing into the amplifier. So I'm just going to play around and just feel it for a little bit. I'll put this back and track on. Uh, I think this one's a E minor. You know what? Right away, I'm feeling, I haven't really done much, but I'm kind of liking that amount of saturation. In a, in a moment, I'm gonna show you how we could stack drives on top of each other, but I'm just gonna take this to a, a lead tone that I think works. I also like this cab, that's kind of got the nice balance. A3, very well-rounded, and you know, we've got a little bit of resonance going there, some high cuts. Amps a little bit sort of scooped, but not crazy like this. Because when it comes to lead playing, the balance between the mid-range and the high range, once we've got rid of that low-end gook, that's where the magic really comes together. So in this case, I've got a little bit of a scoop just from that default preset, and on the EQ, I've got some lower mids also scooped. So this mid here is going to be a little bit higher up and this mid here is going to be a little bit lower down. So if we turn that EQ off, it sounds okay, but it sounds a little bit boxy now with this particular setup that we're going with. Um, but by pulling out some of the lower mids, just emphasizing that real upper mids, so yeah, yeah, 130, yeah, I guess it's high, high bass area. You know, that kind of works well. Obviously, we could use the 8-band and shape that a little bit if I was to use that. That's kind of nice. I'm just going to put the little bit of reverb delay back on. And just, yeah, I'm gonna try that. Oh, I like that. That uh, 125 hertz pushed up by a few dB like that really thickens up my higher notes. And the good thing is, is with the EQ that's in the Polychrome McRockland Suite is you can jump between the four and eight band and see how your setup 
changes. You can hear that there's a little bit of a bump in the, the high and mids here versus the four band. A little bit more scooped and trebly sounding. So that'd be a good thing to try during a mix. You know, you get a, a lead tone, you try two different EQ setups and just see what works. So real quick, let's have a look at the, the reverb and delays because I feel when it comes to reverb and delays and solo sounds in particular, it's all about creating that space. And this is why most of the presets that I have in here use that ducking. Now uh, the ducking, if you're not sure what that is, if I turn the reverb off and I hear delay repeating. I, let's turn that up and turn the filters off. Make it less wide. So we hear, hear that right in the middle there, right? And if, if I start to solo right now, that would be a little bit too much delay for sure. Let's try it. You know, kind of, it kind of works in a, a kind of dark, twisted kind of way, but realistically for your average solo, that would just be too much. So there's a couple of things that we do right away to get rid of that. So ducking is a great thing because it listens to the input of your guitar signal and it lowers the delay whilst you're playing. So the, the higher you have ducking turned up, the more it's gonna turn that delay down. So at 100% like this, if I'm soloing, the delay just completely vanished until I stopped playing. That's probably a little bit too much because then we lose all the, the effect. But that is really cool for some interesting effects, but that's another video right there. So anywhere between, you know, 10, 20, 25, something like that. It's gonna be a reasonable amount. It just subtly moves that delay out of the way. Now, speaking about moving the delay out of the way, this is what spreads great at. Our guitar is right in the center of the speaker. Now the delay goes out to the sides with spread. So we can hear that we have a little bit too much mix. And also, I really like to get rid of the bass and treble. That's great. It's there. But it's less obvious now. And I can turn that down a little bit. Turn on the reverb. And you'll notice in space, we have three bands in the actual reverb. There's not many reverbs that actually have three bands in the diffusion and uh, trails of the reverbs. But previously, I would have to set this up manually by adding my reverb and then adding a separate uh, EQ to the reverb trails. And then you have to worry about all of the sound and the returns. And suddenly that one thing, three band EQ in your reverb, suddenly it's like a massive task to, to set that up every time. So I love the fact that our uh, space reverb has the three band EQ by default. You can cut out all the highs, cut out lots of the lows and pull back the mid range and for lead playing, it helps create space. If I crank all that mid-range up, you hear all that mid-range. Now again, that could be great for a certain effect if that's what you're going for, but for your average solo, where we want what we're playing to really sing and shine. That's working really, really well. So obviously there's one thing I could do is I could introduce wide, which will really, really make our guitar pop. Let's have a listen to that over the track. I feel like for this particular track, I want the guitar to be kind of almost like a little bit more intimate. Like we can touch and feel it right there in the mono and then the reverbs and delays are outside. So for this particular track, personally, I don't think the wide works as good as it would on a track that's very exciting. We want the guitar to be like this kind of blazing monster sort of thing, you know? Um, so 
that's something to think about. How do you want people to, to really hear and connect with the notes that you're playing? Um, so for this track, I'm gonna leave wide turned off. Let's go. Little bit rough there, a little bit rough, but you could tell that the reverb. We could not skimp out on reverbs. Uh, the amount of times that I've just had a great guitar tone and then put a bad reverb on, on it, you know, in a plug in chain, oh god, just ruins everything. Good reverbs make all the difference. Anyway, let's get back on track here and dial those reverbs and delays back. I really like how that sounds just like that. But I want to show you how I would stack, let's say, Attacker and Shredder together, maybe Attacker and Riffer together, and see how we can get uh, those guys to play nicely. So, first thing I'm going to think about is, is, um, is just maybe reducing the channel gain just a tad, and then I'm going to turn on the Shredder, and it probably is going to make some noise. Yeah, because suddenly a lot more gain. So, re remember when I was talking about it's a balancing act. This is not just a software thing. If you plonk two overdrives or two distortion pedals on your desk, on your desk, and you plug them in side by side, boy or oh boy, are they, they're going to make a lot of noise, like chaos. You know, and it's the same in software. It's exactly the same. So I'm going to reduce the drive. I'm going to reduce the level. I'm going to turn down maybe the gain in the shredder, and then I'm going to play with that gate a little bit and just see how much um, saturation we have now. <laughs> Oh, that's, you know, adding a little bit more attack and then the shredder actually has a little bit of a, a nice subtle mid-range of sort of curve to it. So it really helps to get get the notes to pop through in a solo situation by stacking them like this. I like that. I like that a lot. So that's using Attacker with Shredder. And you can feel that it changes the way that you play. It's like it's a different feel thing. That's what I love about stacking drives. Now, when you're stacking drives, I mean, right there, it's actually you know, it's totally fine. It's not doing anything crazy. But if you have too much distortion and you know, you're just willy nilly dropping these drives on, because you have four drives there. So if you start like putting three drives on and you're using heat presser, you know, be warned. It could be a complete chaos mess. It could sound like, you know, you're sitting in front of your interface and it's like this. Your interface is real close. You could get all sorts of stuff. You know, my interface, it's like here, it's at arm's length, right? And it's, it's good, you know, obviously I'm, I'm leaving my volume part up here, so I have to be careful because we're in shred game, shred mode here, you know, there's a lot of distortion. But overall, it works tremendously well. So let's try another combination. Let's maybe try, sh maybe attacker and viber. So let's, uh, let's give that a shot. 
So Viper is a little bit more gentle overall. It's not really the type of pedal that you would go for by itself to be a high gain shred monster, but like <laughs> so much of this plugin, I'm always surprised by how people are using it and getting different sounds. And it's one thing I figured out over time is how to dial in completely different drive sounds because all of this right now is with tightness and brightness turned off. So, the way these distortion pedals behave will change depending on how, how much boost and the tightness and brightness. And suddenly we've gone from like a balancing act to playing like almost like a synth symphony, <laughs> symphony <laughs> with drives and ways that we can boost the amp, you know, it's, it's really fun. And when you turn warmth all the way up, that changes the way it feels. It gives it a little bit more of a retro vibe. So there's this like, there's so many ways. And I mean, that's partly why I put like literally hundreds of presets and the new update that you guys are gonna get will have even more presets, but they are great starting points because you know, I love tinkering and sitting and dialing tones. I absolutely love that. And every time I come up with something that I think is really cool and you're gonna dig it, I just save it. And then the next release of the plugin, you get a bunch of new cool tones to play with. And I think that's a, it's, it's a really good thing, you know? I like keep adding, I like to keep adding extra value to this plugin and it's something we're gonna keep doing. Um, but one more time, let's jump back in here and uh, let's have a play with boosting some signal, uh, some frequencies rather, with Viber. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe I'll thin it out and I'll boost the mid-range. And maybe I'll take some of the treble out of the amp and maybe some of the, uh, not using this one, brightness from the pedal and I'll, we'll, we'll kind of dial the attack back so it's not so vicious. You hear that right away? It's kind of give it a bit more of a fusion uh, vibe. I'm gonna take some more amp uh, bass out from the speakers rather. Maybe I'll add some top end air. But then I'll, I'll smooth it out again, you know? So we're kind of giving it with one pot, taking it back. That was a terrible little slide to the D shop. That was terrible. That was a that was a fail. Whoa! I mean, that's it. It just makes you want to play. It makes me want to keep playing. If I didn't have this streaming software recording this, I would just be sitting jamming it out. So I'm gonna turn on the warmth, I'm gonna add on the tightness and the brightness, and I'm gonna crank up the boost a lot. And then I'm gonna take down the drive, and I'm gonna try, maybe change it over to the riffer. Maybe just, the, maybe just shredder and the riffer. Now, riffer, you hear it has this almost like gnarly, battery dying kind of characteristic in the background. When you listen for it, it's a really, really cool kind of interesting gnarly saturation that it does. It's really, really interesting. A little bit too saturated there because when I'm playing there, when I'm playing the low string, I feel like it's getting a little bit wooly, you know, it's starting to run away from me. So I'm gonna bring in some mids out with the bass. <laughs> yeah, that's starting to sound.
Turn on our wide, give it a little reverb. So much fun, there we go. I'm not even gonna save this preset because I have every faith that you can just go and recreate exactly what we went through today. So if you enjoyed the video, drop a thumbs up on it. And if you wanna see more videos like this in the future, let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, that's been a live video from me, Thomas, sitting with the Polychrome DSP McRockland suite. And um, yeah, such a blast. So if you haven't already checked out the plugin, grab the demo, take it for a free trial and uh, everything that we've just done today, you'll be able to do with the demo as well. See how you feel, and if you love it, grab it. And like I say, we're gonna keep making this thing better and better, and we've got some really cool things coming your way very soon. So thank you so much for checking out this video. I'll see you real soon. Okay, goodbye. End it, end it, press the end button. There it is. All right, cheers guys, bye.